We spent several months trying to find the right concept for The Force Unleashed, and once we kind of hit on this idea of you being Darth Vader's secret apprentice and having these over-the-top force powers, and, and George signed off on that, we had an even bigger challenge ahead of us, and that was figuring out how are we actually going to bring that vision to life. <laughs> The power of the next-gen systems has allowed us to integrate three very complex and robust simulation technologies into the Force Unleashed. Havoc is a technology that we used for our underlying physics system. It's a very robust physics engine that allows us to move a great number of objects on the screen at any given time. That's one part of the three different physics simulations that we're bringing to bear on the Force Unleashed. Euphoria, which is one of the new technologies that we're integrating into the game, is actually true biomechanical AI. Euphoria is the tech that enables us to take a, an animated character and when something unexpected happens or when they're being picked up into the air, they actually can reach for things and it's second nature of the character. They have a sense of self-preservation, a sense of awareness, and what that does for the player is it ensures that no two reactions are ever the same. If you're using the force to grab a crate and you want to slam it into Stormtrooper's face, for instance, what's he going to do? Well, he has euphoria, which is behavioral AI, so he could duck the crate, he could dive out of the way of the crate, he might even grab onto the crate. You never know how they're going to react, you just know that they are going to react. The other new technology that we've integrated into the Force Unleashed is Digital Molecular Matter, or DMM. DMM is a way of simulating the substance of objects, sort of pretending that they're molecules, so that instead of moving parts, you have the material that it's made of things actually behave like they do in the real world. Glass will shatter like glass, metal will bend like metal, wood will splinter like wood. And that creates a very authentic and interactive environments and ensures, again, that you don't see the same thing twice. The difficulty came in, in getting all three of those systems, Havoc and Euphoria and DMM, to, to work, work together, because they're three very different simulations. Even though it was difficult, it was really important for us to focus on simulation-based gameplay because we really feel that that does offer, you know, kind of new and unique experiences for the player. Simulation-based gameplay is essentially unpredictable. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. You start getting in this situation where you're losing a little bit of the control and you don't exactly know how it's going to play out. Just to give you an example of how complex this gets, if I take a crate and I throw it into another crate, Havoc kind of tells the game everything it needs to know about that crate. Its mass, um, its size, when I throw it, the velocity that it's traveling at. However, if I'm to take that same crate and throw it at a stormtrooper, now suddenly we have two different simulation technologies that need to talk to one another and know about each other. The crate, which is Havoc, needs to slam into a stormtrooper who's infused with euphoria. And now that character with euphoria needs to know how fast that crate was moving, what direction it was coming, the velocity, the, the size of the crate, the weight of the crate, all the different things that kind of a, a normal physics simulation would need to know. Then you can also imagine even more complex scenarios, things that happen every day in our game. What if I take a, that same crate and the stormtrooper grabs onto the crate and I throw both of those into the plate glass window at the same time? We've got all three now talking to each other. It's been a huge, huge challenge to get those three simulation technologies to talk to one another, but now that we have it working, it is resulting in new and surprising and unexpected things. And this is what our QA team, the guys that play the game every single day and serve as the eyes and voice of the consumer, are discovering. The game is doing such a fantastic job of really bringing players into this Star Wars universe in, in a way that I think we've never really been able to do that previously on with previous generations and without this kind of DMM and Euphoria tech. One of the original visions that we had at a concept art stage was having a large, almost albino white, evil looking Rancor come pounding through the forest and actually separate and push apart some soft body DMM. And the moment I saw that on the screen, my eyes lit up and I said, all right, we're going to be able to do this. We're at a 
a point right now where all these kind of pieces of the game are coming together, and it is creating this really kind of cohesive, authentic Star Wars experience. When the player steps into that world, this is gonna be the first time that they stop and go, oh, I'm in Star Wars. I think there's just a ton of moments in this game where you kind of play and you get this really full kind of idea of what the Force is. The way the game is set up, the way we're integrating those technologies, you're not playing something you've played before. You're literally playing something that has not been in a game before. So it's a lot of fun to explore that. I think that, that when you finally pick up the controller and you're actually immersed in this game, you're going to feel like you are in the Star Wars galaxy, that you are inhabiting this character of Darth Vader's secret apprentice. And that's an end result of us bringing together all these technologies and all the hard work of so many different team members and so many different disciplines.